I'm back! After a brief holiday hiatus, I'm back! To give you lots of important thoughts on important things. Hey, my thoughts are important. At least I think they are. Not that it matters, because it's my right as American to express my opinions, even if you don't agree. But you all do agree, don't you? I know you do. Why? Because that's how I imagine it in imagination land. Because in here, everything is magical. Shh. That's right, in this country we have many freedoms, not the least of which is our freedom to express our opinions. However, it is also important to note that we have the freedom to disagree with others' opinions. Like, for instance. Over the last several weeks, the state of Utah has received quite a bit of heat over its new abortion laws. Many pro-abortion critics have written scathing pieces on how they believe it's unfair and wrong for the state of Utah to mandate health care. As a result, I couldn't help but come across several of these pieces as I was trying to keep up on the events for the week. And that's when I stumbled across one that I, well, wholeheartedly disagree with. Now, I want to say up front that I'm unequivocally pro-life, and that means that all my views are going to be skewed that way. I will also say up front that my problem is not that she's pro-abortion. My problem is that I disagree with her line of argumentation. The article appeared as a CNN op-ed piece on Utah's abortion laws and was published on March 31st. I'll put a link to the article down below. In it, Dr. Leah Torres speaks very firmly against Utah's abortion laws. In the article, she states that she feels Utah's laws are unnecessarily mandating patients' decisions when it comes to their health care. And in this particular case, when she says health care, she means abortions. Now, there are two primary issues that she brings up. First, she states that mandating anesthesia for the fetus is dangerous for the mother and inconsistent with current medical practices. Second, she says that these laws, quote, put lives in danger. Okay, so let's address the first issue. One of her main arguments is that anesthetizing a fetus is cost prohibitive to doing abortions. In addition, it is inconsistent with fetal health practices. And then she asks a series of questions that I think are meant to be intriguing or thought-provoking. Questions that I will answer now. In order to accurately answer these questions, I'm going to read directly from the article. She says, quote, For a moment, let's entertain the notion that the fetus can feel pain beyond a shadow of a doubt. I wonder then, and then the following questions. Question number one. Why are there no laws mandating fetal anesthesia before a newborn has its skull compressed during a vaginal delivery? Answer. Because while there may be pain, a vaginal delivery is not intended to dismember and kill the baby. Question number two. Why aren't doctors mandated to provide anesthesia before performing circumcisions? Answer. Because while there may be pain involved, last time I checked, a circumcision is not intended to dismember and kill the baby. Question number three. Why is it permissible to withhold anesthesia before performing a spinal tap on a premature baby in the intensive care unit? My answer, and I know this may seem odd, but I just ask you to, to bear with me here. Um, while there is pain involved, last time I checked, that spinal tap in the intensive care unit is not meant to dismember and kill the baby. Is this really that difficult to figure out? I mean, you, you just asked what the difference is between medical practices that are intended to assist the life of the baby and medical practices that are intended to kill it. Yeah, there's a big difference. Which brings me to the second point she makes. Ms. Torres is concerned that these laws put people's lives in danger. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good point, right? I mean, we want to be concerned, because I'd hate to think that during an abortive procedure, someone's life was in danger. So here's a, here, just a, a little tip, um, just in case you, you didn't know. Um, when, when you do an abortive procedure, someone's life is always in danger. And that life's inability to express that does not deter from that reality. 
Look, I'm sure that in many ways, Ms. Torres believes that she's doing the right thing to ensure the best health care for her patients. But let's not pretend like ending a life is the same thing as protecting one. Because I'm pretty sure that when Jesus said love your neighbor, he meant all of them. And that includes Ms. Torres and her patients, both born and unborn. So what are your thoughts on the new Utah abortion laws? And what are your thoughts on Ms. Torres' piece? Let us know in the comments down below or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the hashtag ForthrightTV. I'm Anthony Creedon, and I'm just trying to be forthright. Yeah, the, the whole article was just super interesting. Right, like at, at the end here, she says, uh, the best health care is provided free of governmental interference in the patient-physician relationship. Right, I, I wonder, when does the fetus become a patient? I mean, I, I know the fetus can't speak for itself, but neither can a newborn baby, and we refer to newborn babies as patients, right? And you talk about not wanting governmental interference. Well, what happens when the mom says, I want to kill this baby, and the government goes, um, okay, right? I mean, I would think if the fetus had a voice, it might be like, um, you're going to do what now? Right? Uh, uh, I, I, I would say no to that. Um, no, no, let's, let's not dismember and, and, and suck me out through a vacuum. I don't think that would be particularly fun. And in fact, the fetus might quote that very same thing. Isn't the best health care provided free of governmental interference in the patient-physician relationship? Interesting.